this is Joaquina from Modern Homemakers and today I'm going to show you how to make a pillow. We're going to need, I'm taking an old stinky pillow as my pattern here or you can just cut a pillow to whatever shape you want. Um, fabric cutting scissors, some stretch of fabric. I'm going to cover it with a case that I'll show you how to make in a little bit. So I'm using free fabric for me which is uh, welcome to Joaquina's college dorm room. This was the curtains that I had over my closet. So anyway, this is free for me. And you need polyfill, which is some sort of crazy synthetic material we don't even want to know. So my whole project, let's see here, $2.59 is what we paid at Hobby Lobby. So that's what this project's going to cost to make a new pillow for my couch. So I've doubled my fabric because we need two identical pieces. And because this is an old... Uh, it's probably a shower curtain actually it has plastic in it. It was on my closet because this has some funky edges I'm gonna avoid those when I'm cutting so I'm gonna lay my pillow on top and What you really want is about an, an inch or we'll say our thumb width all the way around So this is doubled fabric and we're just gonna cut Just a little bit like an inch or a thumb space of selvage all the way around the pillow and we're going to fold this in half to make sure it's actually square because this pillow has seen better days. And we're going to try not to cut our thing underneath our pillowcase. And we'll turn. So you can see I would not want that to be if you're reusing old sheets like I am or pillowcases or curtains. Around. All right, now we're going to double check and make sure that's a nice square. Yeah, definitely got some things going on here. Just try it. It's kind of like plain origami. We'll just fold it a few different ways to trim some stuff off. But it is close enough to be in a square that we're not going to get too worried about. Step two, we're going to take this and if you were using really nice fabric that you cared about you would want to make sure that your pretty sides were touching each other. So that's my pretty side facing up and then the pretty side touching. So both out sides are the ugly stuff. And we're gonna take pins and we're gonna pin all the way around. Okay, so we've pinned all the way around and on one side in the middle, we're leaving, you can see it's a perfect size for my hand with pins the other way. And that's because you're gonna be shoving your hand in the pillow to stuff it. So if you can't put your hand there, you're not gonna be able to fit it. So what we're going to do is starting on the other side of our gap, where we're not going to sew, we're going to go all the way around with a straight stitch. So I'll start you off, but this is my backup machine, which smokes and has a horrible machine or smell while the other one's getting fixed. So I'm not going to have you watch me and listen to that sound, but I'm lining up with the presser foot and I'll show you one corner. And if you leave your needle in as you pick up and turn, get a nice straight corner there. And then we're going to make sure when we come back that we do not stitch, we stop at this pin. So I'll see you in a second. So I've stitched all the way along, lining up with the presser foot, and I'm back to the point where I told you, don't stitch here, because we got to be able to put our hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back stitch a little bit in that area to make it a little bit stronger. And you should have done that on this end too, but you know. I was distracted. So we're going to take this out and you have two options at this point. If you own a serger, you're going to go and serge not where your hand was, all around everywhere else. And if not, I want you to take your machine and just do a zigzag right on the edge. Who knew learning how to make a pillow would be so fun, right? Okay, we've got all the way around I surged. And this is a chance if you want to trim threads and whatnot, you could. But since I'm putting another pillowcase on there, not a concern. We're going to open up where you left that hole. And ah, once again, it was a perfect size. And we're going to take it, grab it, 
and pull it through. Ta -da! It's like pulling handkerchiefs out, right? That exciting. Our next step, and I'm grabbing a Sharpie. You could use a crochet hook, the uh, rubber end of a pencil, the eraser end. That's what I was thinking of. And we're going to put our hand in. And the corners can always be tricky if you don't do them now. So we're going to take the, see I've taken the Sharpie, and I'm just pointing at all my corners. How many corners in a square, everybody? Two to go. Let's see here. Okay. Next step, we've got all our corners turned. This is a good chance to make sure you don't have any holes where you missed a stitch. But we're going to take our polyfill and we're just going to start on the bottom and fill in the corners first. So I'm taking my finger and I am making sure to push into the corners. I'm taking off the ring. I don't know what I was thinking with stuffing, but it's gone. Pushing, stuffing into the corner. If you want to save even more money, you could try taking some stuffing out of an old couch. You still want to use some new probably, but that would probably help you know, taking some from an old pillow would help fill in some of the stuffing. They just kind of get matted down over time. You can see this is a pretty fast project to do. Now, I'm going to be tearing it inside because we don't want to have lumps. So it's kind of like playing with it to make sure it fits nicely. The next thing you're going to need is thread that matches. And a needle because there's no way around it. We're going to have to do a little bit of hand sewing. So going around, make sure you're happy with it. I'm happy with it. I can live with this. So I should have already had this threaded, but I did. <clears throat> I'm kind of lazy when it comes to sewing. I don't know if you noticed, but I had yellow bobbin thread in the bottom because I was making a Batman costume and I can switch it over. So I like to double thread, so put your thread through, keep it doubled, it just keeps it from breaking, makes it a little stronger. And we're going to knot our end. And for the end, I'll turn it your way. Basically, we're going to be folding this just like there's a seam. See that? So it's just matched up with the seam. If you're not careful and you don't fold enough over, um, you'll have this jagged edge hanging out and it will have like a woof. It'll like stick out like a bubble if you don't fold it enough. So just take your time and fold it. You can put a pin in it if you want. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come back behind where I need to start in here and we're just going to hide our stitches so don't worry we'll come in and we'll cut all this stuff off later the, there's my yellow bobbin thread I told you and what we're going to do is come to one side right where you want the stitch to be And then we're going to tuck in right next to it. And I'm kind of going sideways through the channel, like through the channel of fabric there. I'm going to cut this just because it's right in the way of what we're seeing. Can you see better now? 
So coming from this side through the fabric, it's, it's a totally different way of sewing because we just don't want you to see what's going on here. Now if you pull it too tight, um, it'll have like a puckered look. So like if I pull too tight, see how that all gathers up and is puckered? So just make sure it's tight, but not to the point where it's puckered. So I'm going to do that all the way across to here and I'll be back in a second to show you how to tie off and hide. I've left these hanging strings here to show you that we're right up next to the end. There's just a little pocket left and when you do a good job you can't even tell the difference between uh, that and that. Yay! And what we're going to do um, is go in and I'm going to tie off a couple times. So I went in just like I'm doing another stitch. I'm wrapping around. Obsessive knotting I guess. And there's one and I've got enough space to do one more stitch. So I'm going to go in and do that stitch. And we're going to come a little past where we started. So once again I left these strings here to show you. And I'm going to tie off one more time, just a little past where we started. I'm going to do one more knot. Oops. Kind of doing it like through where the stitch was from the machine. And then we're going to cut all our threads. And you have a brand new 